An interactive 3D model of the world, I think, changed how mapping is done. I saw that people zoomed into their house. The first thing they do is look at their house. What that does is it gives them context for themselves within the planet. The next thing they visit is the places they don't know. And I really hoped and still hope that this aspect of visiting places that you're unfamiliar with will demystify them and bring all of us closer together by putting everything in context. Google has provided a scale. And over the years within Google, we scaled it even larger. And we've added so much imagery that today we have over 20 petabytes in all the different forms, from street view to aerial imagery to the satellite imagery that we started with. From the smallest nonprofits all the way up to UNEP, we've been able to publish amazing data about the world. We've been helping nonprofits by donating large amounts of uh, Google Earth uh, software, services, and storage for them to tell their stories on top of Google Earth. One of the scientific applications of Google Earth has been uh, to visualize the tracking of various things. In Kenya, uh, a group called Save the Elephants was tracking a large group of elephants uh, with these GPS radio collars. In Kenyan law, you're allowed to kill an elephant if you can prove that it trampled, trampled crops. And there was a beautiful elephant called Mountain Bull that was accused of destroying crops and was under threat of, of death. But using the tracks that were you know, from this collar, it was shown that, that he had never been near the crops in question. Google Earth saved the life of this magnificent elephant. Using Google Earth, we've been able to show people the world. But the most interesting things are actually when the world changes. Google Earth took things that had already been built and made them much more valuable. NASA and USGS have been taking pictures of the planet for a long time but it wasn't accessible. We were able to take the archives of the Landsat satellite offline from tape and bring it online into Google servers. Combining that with an animated interface, we can now show the entire world over 29 years with monthly animations. Later this year, with WRI, we plan to launch a global forest watch. Combining satellite imagery with heavy-duty computer processing, we'll be able to provide a daily map of the changes of forest around the world. Our goal is to use Google Earth as a platform to make a living, breathing dashboard of the entire planet. And I think that the thing that inspires me is that technology is evolving so quickly. And there's so much that can be changed by taking the power of computers and applying it to problems that have been vexing humanity forever. And Google Earth is an example where bringing all of that satellite imagery into an interactive space completely changed how people use satellite imagery and, and thought about the planet. And right now, we don't actually see the limits to what's possible with this technology. The resolution is going to increase, the coverage is going to increase, and time is going to become a critical element. And so I don't see this problem as ending anytime soon. Mapping the world is, is a forever problem.